Welcome back to Dreams of Music and Makeup, or welcome here if this is your first video with us. Consider subscribing to my channel. I love giving you guys what you want to see, and I generally put out two beauty videos every week on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Click that bell to stay updated on all my latest new uploads. I would hate for you to miss something. I just wanted to do a quick kind of overview on brushes, their function, and kind of how to better assess what brush you're looking at. Those are the basics. Honestly, you can use brushes for whatever you choose. I haven't gotten to dive as deeply into this topic as I would like to at this point, and at over a year on YouTube now, I figured we'd better talk about it. So I wanted to give you guys as much information as I could while still not being overwhelming and still being user-friendly and helpful. Cue dog shaking to keep that casual vibe going. <laughs> He's just realized the sister is on my lap and he is not and that's not fair. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about brushes. Hopefully you feel a little bit better informed by the end of it. If you are excited to expand your knowledge on brushes and what they can do for you, give this video a big thumbs up. That helps me out a ton. And as always, leave any requests for new videos in the comments down below. I love interacting with you and I do read everything. As far as brushes are concerned, I don't really discriminate. Aside from Morphe, I have not had any brush company that has burned me so badly that I won't revisit it. I own a lot of Real Techniques, Elf, Wet n Wild, Crown. Um, I do own a lot of Morphe brushes, though I don't highly recommend them. Elf is one of the most affordable brushes out there that I would highly recommend and have stood the test of time for me. By the way, if you are wondering what's on my lips, this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Gloss in Vintage. My lips are so dry and crackly right now, and this is one of those glosses that seals all those layers together and makes it look like you have normal lips. So if you are another dry-lipped individual like myself, consider getting one of those glosses. They're very full and opaque, but they're very, very glossy and comfortable, not sticky. When we're talking about makeup brushes, I will be showing you some that are dirty and some that are clean. I do apologize, I don't have everything <laughs> prepped for this video, but I figured better imperfect than never. That is one of the basics when you're looking at a brush. You don't have to know the name of something, you have to be able to determine what you can use it for. A lot of brush companies don't print labels of any kind on their brushes. If you can better look at your brush and analyze what you're seeing, you will be able to more adequately use it. The more flexibility, the more give this brush has, the less coverage you're going to get with it, regardless what product you're using with it. The less open opaque that color is going to pack on. This first brush I'm going to show you is the blush brush I use today. As you can see, this is a very fluffy and not very densely packed brush because of how much movement there is. Whereas a blush brush like this that's more densely packed and doesn't have as much movement as this one is going to pack that color a little bit more concentrated in one area. Another thing to mention is synthetic bristles deposit just as much product as they pick up. They don't tend to harness a lot of that pigment or powder within the brush after you've used it. Natural bristles do not deposit the same amount of color as they pick up. So the amount of product you're picking up from that pan and distributing are different. So for that reason, natural hair brushes are better for light washes of color where you don't want full opacity. That does not differ with the size of brush that you use. Whether it's an eye brush, a face brush, a full body brush, does not matter. Those themes remain true. As far as you are making me crazy, this dog is just so anxious for attention. All he does is shake in the background of this video because he just wants attention. He's just obnoxious, aren't you? Hush. So now I'm filming with two dogs in this room and two dogs on my lap. Mm -hmm. There are blended brushes that have both synthetic and natural bristles. You will experience some, some differentiation between the two. Something that is tapered is going to create more of a blurred 
appearance than something that is bluntly cut. Blunt edges like this will preserve blunt edges when blending, whereas rounded tips or more tapered edges will be preserved in that blending as well. You'll have more diffused edges. Those are things to keep in mind depending on what kinds of products you're blending onto the skin. What kind of effect are you trying to achieve? If you already know that, you're better equipped to pick the better brush for that task. As far as cleaning your brushes, I would recommend cleaning them as often as you possibly can. For me, I clean this blending sponge every single day because I am acne prone and I will break out if I do not. For brushes, I can be a little bit more lenient, but I do try to stay on top of it. I don't like to use any brushes for more than a week or two without washing them and getting those sanitized and clean again. That is something that a lot of YouTubers don't talk about often enough. I have as many brushes as I do so that I can have enough clean at a time. Probably 300 brushes, it's ridiculous. No Nobody needs that many brushes, unless you're filming videos, you know, it happens. As far as cleaning your brushes goes, hold on to hotel bar soaps that you get. Those facial bar soaps that you get in hotels, doesn't matter who makes it, what it is. If it has less scent, the better. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a little more sensitive, but that is generally what I use to clean my sponge and my brushes when I wash them. So that combined with a little brush egg, I will insert a little picture of a brush egg for you. Essentially, it just helps to kind of get in between the bristles and get everything out a little bit quicker. It's a silicone tool. You will get a lot less pruny fingers if you're using that. It also get your brushes a lot more clean clean and a lot faster. It takes me about 30 seconds to a minute to clean a brush with that brush egg. It's so nice. It really, really helps the process. I'm sure I could speed up that process even more if I found a bigger silicone tool to do that so I could clean multiple brushes at once, but I hope you guys are having a wonderful day or evening wherever you are. I hope this video answered some questions for you. If you have additional questions for me, please leave them in the comments down below. I would love to address them for you. If there are enough of them, we will make a second video like this. Give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you go. I'd love to see you in my next video. Until then, bye.